What's up guys? So we're back for another video. It's just me this time and we're going to be doing another film review. So as you guys can see, 2020 Florida offense versus UGA. So we are going to be looking at a Florida player, but today we're going to be looking at an offensive tackle. We are going to be looking at left tackle Stone for Scythe, who I think is a really underrated prospect in this draft. Uh, and I think I think he's better than a lot of the tackles ahead of him. And some stuff I want to go over first is he had his pro day a couple days ago. And uh, on the RAS scale, he got a 8.81 RAS out of a possible 10, which ranked 135 out of 1,124 offensive tackles from 1987 to 2021. And all the numbers, <coughs> all the numbers that he put up, ignore my coughing, my, my allergies and everything have had me messed up. But he, uh, he's 6'9". <laughs> he weighs 307, which that's poor. He, he, could use to, he needs to gain some weight. But besides that, he uh, bents 25 reps, which was decent. He had a vertical of 27.5. He had a broad jump of 8'7". He had a 40-yard dash of 5.14. Uh, his shuttle was 4.65, and his three-cone was 7.47. And to add on top of that, his full size, like he's 6'9", obviously. Well, actually, he's 6'8". Correct me. 307, 5.144 yard dash, 25 bench press reps, 34 and 3 eighths arm length, and 83 and 1 fourth wingspan, which all of that except for weight, like all the size stuff, he's taller than Penny Sewell. He weighs about 30 pounds less than Sewell, though. Uh, he benched about five pounds or five reps less than Penny Sewell today. His arms are longer than Penny Sewell and his wingspan is longer than Penny Sewell. So all that is really good. Now let's go ahead and get into the film. But before I do that, I just want to say we're just going to be going through just the Florida because this is the only one that I can show you guys without getting copyrighted because the only way you can't get copyrighted is if you show all 22 film and this is the only 2020 game i have of all 2020 of all 22 film and uh if you want to see more of him you can watch obviously the actual game footage but i can't show that without getting copyrighted but yeah stone for scythe he was one of the gators most improved players this season and i think he's going to be a steal in the draft so uh he's really good in pass pro um he was consistently put in uh, situations where it's an empty set with a non-mobile quarterback like Kyle Trask. So they know it's a passing situation, which that's very hard for tackles to deal with in that kind of situation. And he's just very good in pass pro. In this game, you'll see he, sh he basically shuts down as he's Ojolari. He holds him to zero sacks and a couple fringe pressures. Uh, his run game needs work, but it's not terrible. He's athletic, and I think he has a lot of upside, so... Let's go ahead and get into the first play. Now, right here, 72, you can see him that stone for Scythe. Aziz Ojolari is on him. This is a play where Aziz Ojolari does get a pressure on the quarterback, but this one is kind of not much stone can do. As you'll see, Aziz just works across the entire offensive line. Kyle Trask leaves the pocket, so there's not much he can do there. Now, here's what I was talking about. Empty set, you can see 72 right here, and then you can see Aziz Ojolari on the edge against him, 13. Uh, this is what I was talking about, empty set. They know this is going to be a passing situation, and they know Kyle Trask is not mobile, so you're going to see a pass rush here. So let's go ahead and play this. Look at him. You can see, let's watch that back again. You can see Aziz Ojolari try to use a pass rush move here. He's going to try to get around him and – that's just not going to work. Good work by Stone for Scythe on that rep. Now here's another play in the run game. Right here you can see 72. You can't see Aziz Ojolari completely because he's blocked by the camera. But this is a run game rep right here. So let's go ahead and watch. Aziz, Aziz Ojolari, uh, the play runs the opposite direction of Stone for Scythe, you'll see initially. And it's going to cut back. And Stone's just going to lose the block, and Aziz is going to be able to make the play on the running black, running back. Uh, and if you watch this, you can just see that I don't think he was fully expecting the the running back Pierce to cut back, so he just kind of 
just kind of lost the block there. That's that's all you can say about that. Now, on the contrary of this is still run game. You can see 72 right here. He's going to go towards the middle when you see the play. He actually just mauls the defensive tackle. It's kind of a double team thing, but doesn't lose that. Doesn't lose that rep for sure. Now, here's a really good rep by Stone. Uh, first off, actually, I didn't even mention this earlier. Here's a sick name, Stone for Scythe. Come on now. But here's another rep, uh, Zizo Jolari and Stone for Scythe right there. Uh, this is, again, empty set, pass situation. Let's watch him just absolutely maul Aziz Ojolari that he's not even a thought in that play. Not a, not a single chance he does anything in that play. He just gets destroyed. Now here's another great rep in the run game here. So this was initially an empty set, and then uh, they motion Pierce back into the backfield, and it's going to be a run play. So you can see Stone for Scythe. He's going to go towards the middle, and he's actually going to pick up multiple blocks. There he is. He's going to get that block, and then he's going to keep working and just completely eliminate that side of the field with especially how large he is and how strong he is. He can do that. Here's another fantastic rep by Stone against Aziz. So this play, I actually did show this play in my Kyle Trask film review because uh, this is a touchdown, and this is a passing play. So you can see, obviously, 56 on this side. Uh, gets completely whiffs on his block, and Kyle Trask gets almost sacked. But if we look on the left side and watch Aziz Ojolari versus Stone for Scythe, Stone for Scythe, Stone, his arm length is tremendous. See, you see he's just not allowing – let's watch that again. He just doesn't allow him to – use his arms, doesn't allow him to use any pass rush move. He's very good out of his stance. He uses massive power because he's got such good frame, and he's got such a strong core to halt these rushers. Just nothing, nothing. Now, he was a straight-up wall right there, and then obviously you can see touchdown. So what a tremendous rep by Stone right there. Here's another rep where Stone is very strong out of his stance and just very – with his strong frame, he just – that's not Aziz Ojolari. This is somebody else. They, they try to bull rush him here, and it just it doesn't work. I mean, they get a little bit of push, but then once they hit a certain point, there's just – they're not getting anywhere. We'll watch this again. Right there, right there. Let's get to this part again. Let me pause it. He gets a little bit of push right here initially. But then right here, which Stone looks very out of whack, very out of balance, but this is where he actually stands him up, and this is done because he's about to break here, take the pass. And he's not even close. Didn't even get a pressure. Obviously, 56 over here is in a mess, but great rep by Stone for Scythe yet again. Very consistent. Here's a play in the run game. Uh, the run actually goes straight up the middle to the side that the running back is already on. So it's not really anything that Stone's going to do. But Stone here, he actually kind of falls because right here, he's going to get pushed into another lineman and he's going to try and come back and he's already done. So the, run, the play goes to the complete opposite direction. So it's kind of irrelevant, but I thought I'd share anyways. Here's a pretty good rep in the run game here. He's just going to eliminate number 11 from, from the play. Let's watch it here. There he is. So the running back goes right there. So, I mean, let's watch it again. I mean, there's not much after it, but he does eliminate his guy from the play. But I mean, it doesn't take much. So there's a decent rep in the run game for Stone. Fantastic rep in the run game here. You guys can see where 72 is. Obviously, Stone is on the left side. There he is. He's just going to absolutely maul, maul him. He's, he's done. Out of the, he's out of that rep. Great rep by Stone. Eliminates a player from that run game. Obviously, the O-line as a whole has to work together, which they didn't do that very well in the run game. Now, let's watch this rep. So Stone for Scythe, he's going to go, you guys can see my mouse cursor, he's going to go over here and up here, and I believe he's going to block 32. And he's just absolutely going to maul him until the whistle is blown. Let's watch this. Kyle Trask is going to 
end up running towards the left side, but Stone is going to be over here where it's initially supposed to go. So let's watch this play. Here he goes. There he is. He's on 32. Let's just watch him on the watch him at the end. Let's watch that again. Watch him over here. He's just mauling him until the end. He's not even letting him move closer to the play. That's just what you love to see. Playing till the whistle. Absolutely just ending that dude's hope of making a tackle. Now here's a great pass pro rep. So this time you're going to see Stone on the right side, but he's still on the left side, obviously. Uh, against Aziz, Aziz Ojolari, let's watch this rep. He really just battles him. He uses his arm length well. Just doesn't let him do anything. Aziz just had a rough, rough day against Stone for Scythe. It's very consistent and very fun to watch. Now here's an interesting run game rep. Obviously, you guys know where Stone is. So the, the run is going to go directly towards Stone right here. And he's actually going to do decently well against Aziz Ojolari right there. But then 95 right here is going to be pushed right here, and Stone is going to be pushed, and he's going to fall. So it's going to be a mix of him filling that hole, 95 filling the hole, and Aziz getting a slight bit of push. Uh, you'll see right here. 95 just fills the hole to make the tackle, and Stone... I mean, Stone did a good, made a good block. It's just the hole got filled, and then he ended up getting getting on the ground. So, obviously, Stone could have done a better job of pushing Aziz out of the play a, bit, a little bit further instead of being in the position to get pushed and to fill the hole, which is what Aziz Ojolari did. He kind of set the edge. He allowed Aziz to set the edge. Now, here's a rep where Stone does kind of lose in pass pro. Let's watch this. This isn't against Aziz Ojolari. Watch right here. He's going to punch, and he's just going to miss. So, it's just the throw gets out. That's, that's a lost rep right there. Let's watch this again. He's going to punch. Uh, he's going to get the punch to hit the defender, and he's just going to whiff. And the defender right there, he punches, but the defender made him miss the punch. So, He's already gone. He's going to be running around to get Kyle Trask, but Kyle Trask throws the ball before uh, he can get there. Now here's another play where Stone does allow a pressure. Uh, this time, I believe it is against Aziz Ojolari. Yes, it is, right here. He's going to get really wide. Trask is going to move that way, but you can see. Let's roll this back. Let's watch. Let's just watch the full play. He's going to right there. He's going to get the punch, but then he just he just loses him as he runs around him. Let's watch that again. He's just going to get beat around. Yeah, he's in a – look at – you can just see the situation Stone is in after he had that initial punch that Aziz is just going to run around. He's already run around him, and there's not much Stone can do here. And now Aziz is going to have a clean run at Kyle Trask. And obviously, he gets the ball out before. So that's about two pressures, pressures so far, and we're about not halfway. We're getting close to halfway through the game. Giving up one to Aziz, one to number 11. Not sure who that is. Here's a, game in, here's a rep in the run game. You can see 72. He's against Aziz Ojolari. Right here, he's going to get him. But then once Aziz realized this, the ball carrier, Tony, is going inside, he's just going to... It'd be, you do, what you want to see is you want to see Stone kind of like grab a hold of him and keep him from being able to stick in the play. You want to see him take him out of the play, not get a hit, get a punch on him, and then like he gets him here. Aziz already sees that the ball carrier is going this way. So what you'd want to see Stone do is you'd want to see Stone like just get him, not hold obviously, but get him and just run him out of the play. Instead, he allows – he just gets – beat back inside to fill the hole and make the play. Here's a really good rep in the run game. So you're going to see Stone here. Watch my cursor. He's going to block. He's going to come in here, and then he's going to, because Emory Jones, different quarterback, is going to run straight right here, and there's going to be a hole, but then there's going to be a player who fills the hole. I believe it's 25 or 20, and he is going to block them. So let's just go ahead and watch this play. There he is. He's going to block 25 so Emory can – fill this hole 
So let's go this. It's it's hard to watch when it's pausing. It lags around, but we'll watch the play right there. He blocks him out of the play so Emory can get those yards. Good play. Good play by Stone. Now here's a play where Stone just completely whiffs. Watch right here. He's just going to lunge at him, and it's just going to fall. Just, just a bad play. Just completely whiffs. I'm not sure exactly what he's trying to do here. He just falls. Doesn't punch, doesn't do anything. Just falls at his legs. Watch that one more time. Just not a good play, not a good play. Now here's a really good rep against Aziz Ojolari. Let's watch this one. He just, Aziz tries and just, it doesn't work. We'll watch that one more time. Just does not work at all. Great rep, great rep by Stone, not Aziz. Here's a game, here's a rep in the run game where the run is going to go to the opposite direction and he's going to run that way and then he's going to spin around to realize this guy is going to be running past him. So let's watch this. There he is. He spins around to try and get him, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because he doesn't affect the play and it's again, complete opposite side, but it's just kind of funny that he spins around and tries to get him like, okay. Here's another rep where Stone is a just just a pure wall against Aziz Ojolari. Let's watch this. And he actually holds him for quite a while. There you go. Just trying to use the arm length, and he just can't because Stone has that arm length too, bud. We'll watch that again. Let's watch it again. Good out of the stance. Uses his arms. Doesn't let Aziz do anything. Great rep. Now here's a rep where Stone does kind of get beat inside, but the running back picks up the block. Let's watch this. He's going to go outside, and then he's just going to cut right back inside, but the running back is going to fill that right there. And then Stone just assists, basically. So that one, that one's really thankful to the running back. Here's another play in the run game where it does go directly towards Stone. And this is another case of just kind of get him and push him out of the play. Don't just let him hold you in the same spot, like right here. You don't really get any push on him. You just keep him in the same spot, which that's good for pass pro. But in the run game, when somebody's running directly at you, it allows them to get back in and make the play on the ball. So let's watch that again. You can see he doesn't keep Aziz. He just has his arm on him, keeping him away. He doesn't completely lock Aziz up so that he can't make a play on the ball because he does right here. He gets off the arms of Stone and makes the play on Pierce. Now this one, Stone just looks kind of lost and like he kind of whiffs. Like He misses the block on him. He misses the block on him, and then he just – he just goes up here and blocks nobody. So let's watch that again. I'd like to see him block at least somebody and not just whiff on everybody. So it might not be his job, but just something I'd like to see him do more. Now here, Stone actually gives up a sack. So let's go ahead and watch this. This isn't as against disease as you are either. This is against that 11. So let's watch this. He does good. He does good. But then he jumps. And again, this is the same thing that happened earlier. He beats him around he beat him around him and then at this point stone is lost and is now it's just a run at the quarterback stone's gone and there he is he gets he gets to kyle trask so there he goes he gives up a sack right there so that's that's a very bad rep he's got to work on not getting beat uh, so far around like you got to keep him because that's that's number 11 did really well against stone he would jump, kind of push, and then get around him, which that was, that was really what got Stone. So I'd like to see him fix that. Here's a fairly decent rep in the run game. So you're, if, you watch, if you follow my cursor, he's going to go up here. And he's going to pick up a block that allows the running back Pierce to gain a couple more yards. Let's watch this. Picks up the block right there, spins around, gets him. So he makes his block. Nobody else does, but he does. Here's a rep where he does kind of get beat inside, kind of, kind of not. 
So Aziz is going to go like fake out and then go back inside. And it's just going to be, he's going to be getting a lot of push on stone, but doesn't, you could say this is more like a fringe pressure. We'll watch that again. He's going to go outside and then he's going to go inside and stone doesn't really stop him at all. He just slows him. We're back on the left side of the screen. 72. Let's go ahead and watch this. He does get pushed, but then he kind of gains his balance back. He, he's really good at recovering about halfway through. He does get kind of pushed around a lot at first, but then he does recover well about halfway through to prevent anything. So right there. Once he gets this point, he gets his push back and neutralizes the threat. Here's, again, Stone getting beat outside he's going to get that jump push and then he's going to go around him so let's watch this here there he is he jumps and then he's around him in that same let's see if i can pause it right there right there the same spot he's been beat around it's gotten him i'd say three times this game which again doesn't get a sack this time but we saw the sack happen the other time so yeah, on this run play, he does kind of whiff on his block. We'll watch this. He kind of gets him for a second, but then he kind of whiffs on it. But it, the play is already over by the time Aziz gets there. So he does get him for just enough time. But if the rest of the offensive line blocked better, for example, right here, and this guy did not get in there to make the play, then that block being missed would be more key than it is in this specific play. So you'd want to see him not get beat like that. Now, here's a really good rep in the run game. Let's go ahead and watch this. He's going to get off the ball. He's going to get his guy. This time, he's going to more grab and maul him instead of just holding him. So, we'll watch that again. So, he's going to keep his guy out of the play, which allows Pierce to break that tackle and get through that hole, and it's a different player who makes the play on the running back, not the guy that was being blocked by Stone. Here's a really good rep where he just keeps the, the defender, number 90, in basically the same spot the entire time. Let's watch this again. Gets off well, and he just he just holds him. Keep, well, he doesn't – let me rephrase my word. <laughs> he doesn't hold him. He just keeps him in place. So, great rep, great rep. Here's a play in pass pro where the defender is going to get a lot of push on him, Aziz Ojolari, but he's going to redirect him away from the play which is what i really like he recovers and he redirects let's watch that one last time there he goes he redirects him away great play great play by stone in this play stone just mauls his guy and just keeps mauling him. watch him there he goes he gets him there he just keeps going he, he's off screen can't even can't even watch let's, let's actually watch the full screen let's watch He's right there at the top. There he gets his guy. He's going to push him. He's going to keep pushing him. And he pushes, he pancakes him all the way down here. So the play's over here, and the guy Stone is blocking ends up right here. About one, two, three, four, five, about six yards farther downfield and a couple yards wider. So great, great rep. Again, here's a, a play in the run game where Stone's guy right here, he doesn't make the play but you'd still like to see him maul him and not just stop him momentarily because if these other guys block, then that defender that you did not hold for as long is going to make the play. So let's go ahead. Let's watch this play. He gets him right here. He gets him right there. He cuts back in. So he sets the edge, but so he keeps him from directly making the play. But let's say these guys – are blocked this guy is going to make the play if they're blocked so you got to keep him keep him contained but yeah that's the end of the game so overall thoughts i think he could be an instantly day one starter for some team but i think the best case scenario for him would be him to go to a team where he'd sit for a year behind a left tackle and develop into a left tackle of the future, which I think he has the size, the athleticism, and just everything you want. 
And I think he can do it. I, as a Jags fan, from a Jags fan's perspective, Jags fans, I'd really like to draft him because I think the value, I think he's just as good as some of the guys that are going to, I think he's better than Alex Leatherwood. I think he's just as good as Liam Eikenberg and those other guys that are going the top of the second, very late first. I think he's as good as those guys, but I don't know if he's going to go that high. He also doesn't have injury concerns. He's developed tons. I think he's got more room to develop. So I think you're going to be able to get him maybe the third, fourth, somebody's going to realize how good he is. So I doubt he's going to be in there in the fifth, but if he's in those later rounds, you need to take him because that's going to be very good value. And he's a very good player, better than a lot of the players that are going to go before him and sit him behind Cam Robinson for a year. Uh, see how Cam Robinson does. If Cam Robinson doesn't do good, you don't get a new contract. You let him walk, you move on to stone. Who's going to be going into his second year after developing behind Cam Robinson. Because stone is a left tackle. He's, he's got the, capabilities to play left tackle he's got the size he's got the athleticism he got everything you want so just let him sit there for a year develop and or if cam robinson gets hurt stone like i said he could be a day one starter so he'd be somebody who as a rookie would be worthy or would be good enough to be put in there if cam does get hurt so overall i think stone is going to be a steal of the draft he's very underrated and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have if you have any tips for future film reviews, I do comment them below. If you have any thoughts on Stone, comment them below. Make sure to subscribe, like, watch my most recent podcast with Sean and Brian. Watch all the other videos. Make sure to share everything. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time. Peace.